Hello, my name is Wayne Byers, and I've been teaching ballet in Paris, France for the last 30 years. Welcome to the first video in a series on ballet technique. I'd like to share with you some of the ideas I found along the way, and today we're going to start at the beginning with plies. So let's go. Dancers frequently ask me what they can do to improve their dancing. What's the first thing? And I almost always reply by work on your plie. However, what they think I mean by work and what I mean by work can be very different. Way too often, uh, dancers try to muscle their way through, through their bar, through their classwork, uh, and using all these muscles, it's very reassuring. They, they think they're, they're, they're working really hard. And maybe we could change the idea of working hard to working well. I think it was Marilyn Monroe that once said very famously, gravity always wins in the end. And when we're working on plies, gravity is our best friend, not an enemy. What we're really doing is accepting gravity, working with it. I'd like to show you a couple examples of some of the errors that I see dancers doing and then correct them and show you how it could be done in a much more easier and efficient way. What you see going on here is very typical of the problems I see done by many dancers, even professionals. They think that they're doing something interesting, maybe they think they're warming up their knees or being very mobile and finding movement. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, this is very inefficient and is causing problems in their body. I think that maybe if we look at the human skeleton a little bit and try to understand the plie, maybe we can get these two young dancers to improve. So you see here in the skeleton that there are basically three major joints working in the plie, demi-plie or grand plie, the hip, the knee, and the ankle. Each one of these joints has to move freely, and they're all coordinated together. If one of them becomes blocked, the other two become blocked. And if your plie is stiff or uneasy and not, not flowing, you can't really do anything. You can't jump, you can't run, you can't turn, uh, you can't do jazz, modern, ballet, forget it. So we want to see how in unconsciously in our bodies we might be blocking one of these joints and stopping our plie from being as easy and as beautiful as possible. So the joint that most ballet dancers are going to block is the hip joint. And when I was a, a young dancer in the 60s and 70s, uh, teachers would often speak about tucking under. Well, now we know better. So if we look at these, wait a, just a second, just all you need to do is just while it tuck under a little bit and look what happens, do a demi-plie now, do a demi-plie, right? Now, I want you both to release your hips, release the hips, and let's see what happens. The plie becomes much deeper right away. Now, you come up again, tuck under, plie, and plie. You see how the plie is stopped. It stopped here, it stopped the movement in the knees, it stopped the movement here. Now, let's come up again, and let's just think of dropping the tailbone down, what we call neutral pelvis. Right, now, stay here, both of you. And you can see that the knee is moving from behind. Come up. Maybe when you were kids, you had people come behind you and, and push here. Right, that's the way the knee works. And the ankle, we want to think of the front of the ankle as moving back. Can you both do a demi-plie again, please? Demi-plie, that's right. Now we have all three joints working for an easy plie. Would you both come up again and please do first position? So the same thing. Now let's tuck under just a little bit and do your demi-plie. Right, so here the plie stopped. We could, you might also notice that the thigh is rolling in, putting a lot of strain on the knee and also in the ankle. Now let's just drop, let's find neutral pelvis and the plie just sinks down. It becomes much easier. Demi-plie, down and up. Now one of the other things I'd like to point out here is that a plie is a circular movement. We don't just go down and then come up. We go down to come up. So we're coming, going up and down. It's a circle, demi-plie and tendu. 
demi plié and tendu. That's much better. So surprisingly, one of the things that gets in our way is our willpower. Dancers and teachers, we want to do things so well that we tend to overdo and doing it poorly. Now in plies, what happens is that dancers think that they have to help help themselves go down by maybe pressing, pulling down here in the armpits, pressing their pelvis down onto their legs. And as I mentioned, all we have to do is accept gravity. Gravity is there, and believe me, gravity doesn't need any help. But we do need to think about how quickly or how slowly we allow, and I want to stress the word allow, gravity to act on our bodies. So instead of thinking I have to push something down, I just have to relax up and stay connected above my head, thinking of giving my head a direction thinking of going, letting my head flow up and away from my spine. And I can just decide how I let gravity do the work. In this sense, it's good to be lazy. Now, sometimes we will be using a lot of muscles, but you have to learn to allow, to let plie be an exercise that's easy. It's a way of saying good morning to dance, good morning to your body, and just being able to go up and down without disorganizing your body. One of the images that I have found very helpful is to think about uh, horses on a merry-go-round going up and down. Now that doesn't mean a stiff pole inside, it means a central axis. And I'm just changing levels, just changing levels without having to go through a lot of different movements. Because let's think about it ballet technique, at the end of the day, what does it usually involve? Turning, jumping, point work, and all of those actions involve going from plie to up. So I would say 80% of ballet technique is learning to perfect this pathway between plie, relevé, and jumping, being able not to disturb the way you organize your body, and then you can do it so much easier and start thinking about other things instead of how can I stand up and not lose my balance, not, not, not fall on my face. So this is where it all starts at the bar. By your plies. Never, never underestimate the importance. It's a lifetime project. It's something we never stop discovering. Every day, every year, and our entire lives as dancers. Now another really important problem is going down too deep in the plie. Many dancers think that they're working on their knees or warming up their knees, and they're not. The human body and the knee joint, in particular, is not built to sustain so much weight. It is not a weight-bearing joint. So if you could both come up, please. So I know some teachers don't even do grand pliés any longer. I, I, I do do them, but I would like you both to do a plié, but to stop your plié, Keep going down. You can go down right ju just before your, your thigh hits your, your calf muscle. No, a little bit of space here. A little space. Right. Now that's deep enough. And you can come up again. Let's do one more. And let's just give a little bit of space in the knees. Right. And without, and coming up. Now I know that when you do go down too deep, most don't, dancers don't feel any pain. But know that you are wearing your knees out. And you only have one pair. So maybe you're thinking, well, what about turnout? And in my opinion, I don't think plies, grand plies, is the appropriate moment to really be concentrating on turnout. Of course, we're engaging the rotation in the hips and the legs, but there's other exercises that are better adapted to that. But I'd like to share with you one little trick that I've learned. There's a very natural function in the knees, as we bend our knees, there's a slight rotational movement behind the knees. Remember when I spoke about allowing? If you don't, if you just don't, you let this happen, you can plie, and you just think. It's enough just to think about this turning, a slight movement from behind the knees, and, you, and your legs fall right into place, and, you, and, you, and you're allowing this natural movement and keeping the flow of the plie. So let's put it all together and do an easy combination of plies. And while these two dancers do it, I'll remind you of some of the ideas we've touched upon today. 
So if you'd like to start, seven and eight, and so while they're doing this, they're trying to not press down, not pressing the hips down. They're thinking of keeping their heads free, their neck free, and you'll notice that their heads are turning, but they're turning on the central axis. So if I touch a head, I can see that it can move easily. Now they'll do a demi-plie and go forward just to release tension and relax. Release the head and the neck and come up and into second. Now in second, I want you to think of finding that little movement behind the knees, right? And just think of releasing up. Remember, it's the horses on a merry-go-round. Just going down to come up, making a circle, making a spiral. And for the arm, you just have to move the hand and let the hand follow. And into the bar, like yawning in the morning. Oh, that feels so good. And opening onto the other side. And yes, and then feeling stable and easy and still inside their bodies, not pushing out from the excess. Now we can go into the fifth and releasing from behind the knees and think of your hips as going up. Now here's a little clue for the arms. As the hand comes down, think of the armpit as going up. So your shoulders are just floating on top of the rib cage. And now just, you can imagine that you're holding a scarf in your hand and letting the scarf go behind, keeping the legs steady and keeping the head moving away from the spine. So easy, so free, and so enjoyable. So that's a lot of things to think about. And we have to be wary of one of the traps in dance, and that's uh, segmenting our body into different parts. I like to think of the body as a family that gets together on Sunday to, to do housework. Maybe the mother's going to clean the kitchen and sister's going to clean the bedroom and dad's down in the basement cleaning and everybody's participating to make the job easier. So we want to think of our bodies as a, a unit, a psycho-physiological unit. Uh, Frederick Matthias Alexander, the creator of the Alexander Technique, said very famously, one after the other and all at the same time. So yes, these are all separate things, but they're all working together. And you know, when we go into ballet class, it's so easy to go in and just repeat the same movements, repeat what we know. And we never really change, we just ingrain our bad habits. So my final suggestion to you is, if you really want to change the way you're working to make improvements, Try changing the way you're thinking about what you're doing. And you'll see if your thoughts are correct, and some of the things that I've given you today I'm sure will be very, very helpful, you will definitely see changes, long-lasting. Thanks, and see you next time.